video is learning target 13 of unit 4 on plant life cycles. A couple terms that we are familiar with already we need to just review. One is meiosis. Meiosis is the production of haploid cells. These cells are called gametes typically or sex cells and as we're talking about plants where the male gamete is the sperm cell and the female gamete is the egg cell. And so we're using those terms quite a bit. And these gametes can combine to form a structure called a zygote, which is diploid. And this process is called fertilization. So the sperm and egg combine, and this process is called fertilization. Now as we begin talking about plant life cycles, okay, we're going to use this concept of alteration of or alternation of generations. And we start here with the my, with meiosis. Meiosis creates these haploid spores. And this the spores grow into structures called gametophytes. And gametophytes are structures that make gametes. Phyte means plant, gameto means gamete, so plants that make gametes. And in some plants, this is, this is going to look different in different plants, but still we're always going to have a gametophyte, and that gametophyte is always going to make gametes. That, that rule doesn't change. Well, those gametes combine, that's called fertilization and they make a zygote, diploid now, and notice we've changed colors because we're no longer haploid, we're diploid. We've alternated our generation and that zygote grows up to be a sporophyte. Sporophyte, a plant that makes spores. And so the sporophyte then creates spores through the process of meiosis and now we've alternated back to haploid and this just goes around and around through the generations of plants. And so understanding the concepts of meiosis, fertilization, the terms spores, zygote, gametophyte, and sporophyte will go a long way to helping you understand this process. We're going to talk about four different life cycles, but if you don't understand those basic terms, this is all going to be difficult. And this may be something you have to watch several times in order to kind of get the flow of it. But those basic terms will be used in everything that we do. And of course, like all things, we're going to paste some other terms onto there as well. But it's those basic ideas that we're going to continue to hang on to. Here is the bryophyte life cycle. This is a picture of the bryophyte life cycle. If you like this, pause it, use it. But I'm going to draw the bryophyte life cycle as I want to do. And so we are going to start with meiosis. I start with meiosis every time, not because it's the right place to start, but it's just because I like to start there. And meiosis, again, is the production of spores. I'm going to draw spores. And I'll write it in spores. Well, and this is, again, this is the bryophyte life cycle, so we, we don't lose sight of what we're doing here. Bryophyte life cycle. And these spores in bryophytes can be either male or female. And the female spores grow to be kind of this, this reminds me of like these little plants that kind of stick out of the ground and have all these leaves that go up the side of them. You've seen them before. Well, the female gametophyte has a structure, and we'll just call the whole thing this to be easy. The archegonia means it produces the egg, all right, the archegonia. Well, the male gametophyte 
again, a very similar looking plant, except for the top where you actually find the archegonia, or in this case, it's called the way too close to that. Antheridia, again at the top of the plant, and the antheridia produces the sperm, and the archegonia produces the egg. And so what are these structures called? Well, they are the gametophytes. Now, bryophytes are unique in that they are the only type of plant in which the gametophyte is the dominant cycle, the dominant generation of the plant. Meaning that when you see a bryophyte, you see the gametophyte generation of the plant. All the other plants that we're going to talk about, what you see is the sporophyte generation. When you look at an oak tree, you are seeing the sporophyte. The oak tree is the sporophyte. When you look at moss, you are seeing the gametophyte. Well, the archegonia produces eggs, right? Antheridia produces sperm. And moss need water to reproduce because the sperm will actually swim. They're the only plants that need water to reproduce because the sperm have to swim to get to the archegonia. And so, I'm just kind of zoom here a little bit. I'll use a different color for the sperm. The sperm are created here in the anthridia, and they will like physically actually swim into the archegonia to fertilize the egg. And this, again, they combine this, it's called fertilization. And this produces the diploid zygote. Well, the zygote is now the sporophyte generation and in mosses this sporophyte generation looks different than in any other type of plant because again the gametophyte is the dominant version so in mosses better sporophyte color here it's a good sporophyte color the sporophyte actually grows up out of the moss like that. I'm exaggerating the size a little bit to show you. This is this whole thing is called the sporophyte. Well this little structure up here at the top where the spores are made is called the sporangium. Inside the sporangium meiosis is happening creating spores, which can either grow up to be an antheridia and archeconium. Those combine, zygote, and so forth. This is the bryophyte life cycle. There's a picture of the sporophyte and the gametophyte. You can see the gametophyte again. This is what we think of when we think of moss. Sporophyte looks like these uh, little eyes or something that are watching us. Fern life cycle. It's a seedless the vascular plants. A couple of structural differences. There's not a lot of uh, vocabulary differences here. The sporangia in ferns actually are located on the back of the sporophyte leaves in these little structures. You've probably seen them before, maybe, if you've been around ferns a bit. And also, Oops, I don't have that picture located. One other structural difference in ferns is the gametophyte. And I'll just draw this to be, to be better here. The gametophyte of a fern is actually just a little leaf that is heart-shaped. And on this leaf, is located both the archegonia and the anthridia. So the eggs are made here, sperm 
here, or on this portion of the gametophyte, and the sperm and egg combine on this little gametophyte, and literally it looks like a little leaf just sticking out of the ground. If this is if this is the size of the whole fern, you know, here, the gametophyte is like just real little on the ground. It's a tiny little leaf that is just on the ground next to the the actual sporophyte. And so how does this work in the life cycle of a fern? Well, again, we'll start with meiosis. So this is a fern life cycle. We'll start with meiosis. And we'll begin with the production of spores yet again. And in this case, the spores grow up to be this single gametophyte structure that has both the archegonia and the antheridia on it at the same time. So, whereas in the moss you had a separate archegonia and a separate antheridia, here you have them on the same structure. But very similar. Archegonia produces egg, Antheridia produces sperm, and they combine, and that process is called fertilization, and we make a diploid, a diploid zygote, and that diploid zygote grows up to be the sporophyte. And through the magic of video recording, I was able to you know, draw that nice looking fern there quickly. And this is the sporophyte. So the actual fern that you're, you consider, a, this is what I think of when I think of a fern, it is the sporophyte generation. That sporophyte has the sporangia on the back of the leaves, they go through meiosis, and we have this whole life cycle again. So there is the fern life cycle. Next are gymnosperms. Gymnosperms are different still. Remember these are seed bearing plants. So in seed bearing plants the gametophyte is not as apparent as they were in seedless plants and then the gametophytes will be almost microscopic. They're going to be so small. And in gymnosperms we have a particular kind of structure produced called a cone. And we have both pollen cones and seed cones. The pollen cone is this one on the bottom and it is the male cone. The seed cone is here. This is what we normally think of when we think of a pine cone. These are female. And the pollen cone produces, well, pollen. Pollen is the male gametophyte in seed bearing plants the male gametophyte in seed-bearing plants. Inside those pollen grains are sperm cells. And so this is what the gametophyte, again, remember, produces the gametes. And so this is a microscopic structure, but it is still the gametophyte. In the seed cone, the structure that produces the gametophyte is called the ovule. We'll, do, we'll spend some more time talking about the ovule on angiosperms. We're not going to spend a lot of time with, with it on seed cone or with it on cones. But I can draw this life cycle as well. So this is the gymnosperm life cycle. Start at a different place here because I want to draw attention again to the cones. This is a seed cone. And for our pollen cone, we'll have this nice yellow. And so this is a female cone, the seed cone. And this is the male cone, the pollen cone. But again, the process of meiosis. Whereas the pollen cone produces pollen, which is the male gametophyte.
and the female cone produces the gamet female gametophyte is produced by a structure called the ovule but we still have sperm we still have egg the sperm and egg combine and that is called fertilization and that produces a zygote that's a little bit different in seed cones or in combs because the pollen will actually go down into the inside of the seed cone. You see these little areas where it can get into and it gets into the ovule and we'll talk about how this works in, when we talk about angel sperms but this is where seeds are produced. So down inside the seed cone, this is a seed cone cut open, you see those seeds that have been produced through the fertilization. The sperm getting with the egg, fertilizing, becoming these seeds. And what happens with the seed cone is when they when it's ready to release those seeds, it will open up, release the seeds onto the ground. You, you may have eaten pine seeds before. They're called pine nuts. And they, they taste good. They're nice pesto sauce. Um, however, this is the pine tree seed that can grow up to be a full-on pine tree. And so the diploid zygote in this case becomes a seed, which can then grow up to be the sporophyte, which is the pine tree or whatever, cedar some sort of general sperm. Which has cones on them, do meiosis, produces the gametophyte, sperm and egg are made, fertilization, so forth, the general sperm life cycle. Seed cones again. One last look at the general sperm life cycle going forward. All right, angiosperm life cycle. These are flowering plants, so they're a little more, a little more complicated, but not a whole lot more complicated. First, we have to talk about flowers. Here's a flower with some previous drawings on them that I'm unable to get rid of, and so I'll just um, make my own flower. First of all, when we think of a flower, you know, we think of kind of this structure that we've all drawn, or at least I have. These are the petals. For the purpose of the petals, they're to attract insects because with insects, you get uh, pollination, you get the transfer of pollen, and so that's very important. And you remember the little leaves that are underneath the petals that are kind of like that. Um, these are called sepals. They cover up the, the flower while it's still, uh, before it forms. They kind of give it protection in that regard. Well, inside the flower, so if, we, if this is the stem coming up here, inside the flower you have two structures. One of them is kind of this long structure like this, and the other structures look more like this. And this is going to be different in, all, in every plant, but this is kind of the, the prototypical flower here. This middle section is called the carpal. And this is the female structure of the flower. Whereas this bottom section is called the ovary, which is where the ovule are contained. All right. Well, this other structure, this whole thing is called the stamen. And the stamen is the male portion of the flower, whereas these little pads at the top are called the anthers, and the anthers produce pollen. And what happens is the pollen can travel down this tube, this is like a this pollen tube, and can 
fertilize the plants. The plants can actually fertilize themselves. No, that's not a sexual reproduction. It's still sexual reproduction, but a plant's not going to have a lot of variation if it fertilizes itself, which is why insects are so important, fly from plant to plant in order to fertilize the different plants. Well, let's take a closer look inside this carpal because inside the carpal is the ovules and inside each ovule you might have here's the ovules and each one of them there's something called the embryo sac. So let me zoom in on the ovule because inside this embryo sac, there is a cell. And this cell will actually go through three cellular divisions. Now just straight up mitosis, nothing crazy. So there's one division two divisions, three cell divisions until there's eight cells. One of those cells becomes the egg. This is the part that gets fertilized by the sperm. Well, two others of the cells become what are called polar nuclei. And so the sperm travels down, and it will actually fertilize both the egg and the polar nuclei. And so what we call that is double fertilization. So whereas sperm plus egg still equals diploid zygote, but sperm plus polar nuclei is going to create a new structure called the endosperm. And so if you think about your, your seed here, here's a seed, the zygote may only pick up a small portion of this seed, whereas the endosperm picks up the rest of it, and the endosperm actually provides nutrients for the, the young zygote as it's growing and becomes those cotyledon leaves, those first couple of leaves. And so what ends up happening inside this ovary here is each one of these ovules will be, become a seed. And there may be several seeds, perhaps through six. Then what occurs is the, after fertilization, the ovary walls thicken, fiddle with sugar in order to become extra tasty. And that structure will then fall off the tree, and that's where fruit comes from. So fruit is nothing more than the thickened ovary walls, and as the fruit thickens and falls off, this provides a tasty snack for a horse that walks by, and then the horse deposits that seed down the trail a little bit, and that seed has its own little pile of fertilizer to grow into a new apple tree. And so fruit has allowed angiosperms to reproduce rapidly and also spread, which creates more variation. And that's obviously a very good thing for plants. There are several ways that seed can travel, animals and humans. Um, the wind can carry them, water. Some seeds actually burst. Those are... Those are fairly fascinating types of seeds. And then lastly, 
So we dealt with the angiosperm life cycle. I'm not going to draw that one. But you can kind of see it here. Uh, it's the same idea. It's double fertilization. is nothing more than fertilization growing into the sporophyte. The sporophyte producing the two, uh, producing the gametophytes through um, meiosis, producing spores in this case, which aren't really visible because they turn into the pollen and the ovule and the embryo sac and that the double fertilization again. And so you have this whole life cycle, very similar to all the other life cycles that we've talked about, but just a few additional pieces. And so lastly, you have the seed that falls onto the ground and what it does is called germination, which is just the growing of this new seed into a, a sporophyte.